I'm Kim Stanley Robinson. I'm a science fiction writer, and my most recent book is called Shaman. Shaman is a kind of a science fiction novel, but it is about the Paleolithic period. It's about the people who painted the caves in the south of France 32,000 years ago. I'd wanted to do a novel set in the Ice Age for a long time, but I didn't have anything more specific than that until I saw the images from the Chauvet Cave. And these are just stunning images. Some of the most beautiful art ever done comes right from the beginning. So at that point I said to myself, let's tell the story of the people who painted that cave. Because somebody had to go in there first and have the idea. And that's the interesting moment, the moment when humans decided that painting inside the cave was uh, special and important. One advantage of setting the book 32,000 years ago is that Neanderthals were still alive. They were at the end of their run, and they didn't last much more than about 5,000 years past that time. And nobody knows why they died out, but they did. And given that I was writing about that period, it gave me an opportunity, because the two species interacted extensively for quite a long time, and we don't know what that interaction was. Some people think it's murderous, but now we find that there's Neanderthal DNA in our systems, even today, so it was obviously a complicated story that needed to be told. In a lot of ways, the people 32,000 years ago were just like us. They were a high-tech culture. Their uh, personal kit would have included about 60 different substances, skillfully assembled. And the Iceman had a fanny pack, and in the fanny pack were all of the elements of a Swiss Army knife disassembled and in their constituent parts, all except for the corkscrew. But uh, they were modern also in their language. And the way that they were different from us is that they didn't know uh, as much about the world as we know now. And they were lacking in one really crucial technology that has changed our consciousness, which is writing. And that was something I had to come to terms with. This was an oral culture. They didn't have any texts to read or to um, study. So their culture, which was stable over 20,000 years, which is a hard uh, concept to come to terms with when you think about it, was transferred by word of mouth from uh, the older people to the younger people, even though they were only living on average about 40 years. So this was a, a huge difference that I, I had to try to express in the book and, and it's really something that the book is about that difference so you have to imagine them being just like us genetically they're just like us except they didn't have lactose tolerance and other than that their DNA is exactly like ours but they didn't have writing and so they thought differently they they imagined the world differently than we do it's a funny thing to write a book set in 300 years in the future and then 32,000 years in the past but it often occurred to me that that's really where we are right now. That uh, at this point we're virtual, we're augmented, we're constantly in the technological sublime. Yesterday I was in San Francisco watching a Yes concert, today I'm in New York. It's mind-boggling what we can do and that's 2312. But at the same time, every day we're doing the basic Paleolithic activities of talking to each other, of making our food, of uh, dancing, of having sex. These are all ancient behaviors. And so we are the intersection of 32,000 years ago and 300 years in the future. And that's why things feel so strange to us now. And when you distrand the two and you tell stories about each side, it's a way of illuminating us and uh, getting a better uh, view of what we are right now.